After the final bombardment, the advance guard of the Imperial mechanized army swept past the perimeter defenses into Tobruk. And this fine harbor town in Africa changed from Italian control to British. Again in Tobruk, as in Sidi Barani and Badia, there were thousands of prisoners who popped up from all sides and surrendered. In the capture of Tobruk, important naval units fell into our hands. In the harbor itself, the Italian fleet was well represented. And you will notice how all the prisoners appear to be quite well pleased at the turn of the wheel of fortune. Naval, military and civilians who fell into our hands have the appearance of being on a picnic. Among the prisoners there were, of course, several assorted generals, but this time there was also an admiral who put on his white gloves specially to surrender, Admiral Massimiliano. This was the lighter side of the victory, but our cameraman in the town itself found evidence of the hell through which Tobruk had passed before the final attack. operations in Cyrenaica so far, more than 20 Italian generals have been captured, while the other prisoners number over 100,000. And here are some of our generals who commanded the action. There were many women in the town when it capitulated. It is interesting to learn that when Graziani passed through Libya on his way back, he told the civilian inhabitants not to be afraid. The British will not hurt you, he said, but will leave you to work in peace. So the vanquished troops pass out of the town to captivity while the victorious army of the Nile streams in. The same scene, but following a different battle. History lives before your eyes. Through the medium of Goma British News, you watch the march of events that shape the world of tomorrow. Brook, another Italian air base came into British hands, El Adem. Royal Air Force bombers had battered this aerodrome into silent acquiescence of the forward sweep of the land armies. The capture of El Adem was completed by a detachment of the advance guard, and 68 more planes were lost to Mussolini. In addition, more valuable stores fell into our possession as a sideshow to the main battle. Here is some of the tragic aftermath of battle. Italian soldiers, wounded in a struggle they never wanted, received treatment from the Red Cross. We need not blind ourselves to the fact that many Italians would have been quite pleased about the war if Mussolini's generalship had proved the equal of his ambition. They would have accepted their spoils if their march had taken them to the gates of Alexandria. But Mussolini entered the war against the wishes of the vast majority of his people. He brought them only ruin and misery. Remember the words of Mr. Churchill. One man and one man only was resolved to plunge Italy, after all these years of strain and effort, into the whirlpool of war. After all these years of strain and effort, into the whirlpool of war. The crafty, cold-blooded, black-hearted Italian, who had thought to gain an empire on the cheap. These are the wages of all wars, destruction, misery and hardship. But we fight and we shall conquer, because we knew it was right to fight. 
We prefer months of hardship to years of hardship plus slavery. For the time being, at any rate, the happy people of this campaign seem to be the prisoners. They have repeatedly shown that they were glad to surrender. That is good and pleasant news, but they must also be made to work for our final victory. You'll be glad to hear that some of the Army of the Nile were able to take time off for a little amusement too. After months of stern training and the strain of battle under terrible natural conditions, they let go. And if ever men earned a good time, these men did. say the goat was named Benito and the soldier was knighted and for all we know they probably made him a count like the Duchess son-in-law but that frivolity soon gave place to work again as it must for all of us for many months to come tanks in the conquered street proclaim our resolve to finish the job the war rolls on to Benghazi and westward further still the war rolls on into a dim, strange future whose darkness not one of us can pierce. It is fraught with danger and sometimes with desperation, but the African victories have proved the mettle of an empire newly born. Whatever dangers and disasters may lie in the path ahead, keep on telling the world that when the last ceasefire is given, we shall be there.